Hello, today I will review the paper accepted in CVPR 2018 oral. The title is Maximum Classifier Discrepancy for Unsupervised Domain Adaptation. Maximum Classifier Discrepancy in this title means that this paper proposes the method that maximizes discrepancy between two classifiers' outputs, and this can solve the unsupervised domain adaptation problem. First, I will explain what unsupervised domain adaptation is, and I explain some previous works for solving this problem. Third, I introduce a proposed method in this paper and show some theoretical analysis related to this paper. Also, I show the experimental settings and results with some data sets, then I summarize it. This paper focuses on unsupervised domain adaptation. Domain adaptation is a task of inferring class labels for an unlabeled target domain based on a label source domain. The figure 1 shows the conceptual process of unsupervised domain adaptation. When we train a network, we only use source data with labels and unlabeled target data. Our goal is to train a classifier using label source, source samples and unlabeled target samples that generalize well to the target domain test data. To solve this problem, some papers proposed domain classifier based adaptation algorithms. Domain adversarial neural networks and domain separation networks used domain classifier with adversarial learning. These methods are based on adversarial learning with domain classifier. The methods utilize two players, feature generator and domain classifier, to align distributions in an adversarial manner. The domain classifier as discriminator is trained to discriminate the domain labels of the features generated by the generator, whereas the feature generator is trained to full domain classifier. They are trained like generative adversarial networks. They assume that search target features are classified correctly by the task specific classifier because they are aligned with the source samples. However, this method has some problems. This method does not consider task-specific decision boundaries between classes. The domain classifier simply tries to match the source and target distri distribution similar, and it does not consider the relationship between target samples and the task-specific decision boundary. Therefore, a feature generator can generate ambiguous features near class boundaries or wrong features. In this figure for adversarial learning with domain classifier, it shows this method fail to embed the target features for a task specific classifier correctly. In here, here, and here. Also, it is difficult to completely match the feature distributions between different domains because each domain has different characteristics. In this paper, they propose a new method that do not use domain classifier but use two task specific classifier for solving an unsupervised domain adaptation. They focus on the outputs from two different task-specific classifiers and they train the task-specific classifiers to maximize the discrepancy between outputs from classifiers. By utilizing the classifiers' decision boundaries, they can find the target samples that are far from the source domain. Also, they train a feature generator to generate target features minimize the discrepancy and it makes the generated target features classified well. For explaining details of proposed method, I introduced some notations. We have a label source image X XS and a corresponding label YS and these are drawn from a set of label source image 
X, S, and Y, S, as well as un an unlabeled target image X, T drawn from unlabeled target images X, T. G denotes the feature generator which takes input X, S, or X, T, and F1, F2 are two different task specific classifiers which take features from generator G. We use the notation P1 Y by X and P2 Y by X to denote the K dimensional probabilistic outputs for input X obtained by F1 and F2 respectively. In this section, I'll explain architecture and details of training procedure. The architecture is simple, that is composed of shared feature generator G and two different task specific classifier F1 and F2. There is no domain classifier. First step, we train both generator and two classifiers to classify the source samples correctly. They train the network to minimize the softmax cross entropy loss. In this step, two classifiers are initialized differently to obtain different classifiers. In order to make classifiers and generator obtain task specific discriminative features, this step is crucial. We can explain by this training procedure with diagrams. The source feature samples are closed by dashed line and the target feature samples are bounded a uh, normal line. The blue area means class A and orange area means class B. The area with black lines means that discrepancy region that misclassifies the labels of target samples. When we train two classifiers and generator to classify source samples correctly, we can consider two classifiers, F1 and F2, that have different characteristics in the leftmost side of the figure, like this. This assumption is realistic because we train the networks by labeled source samples. Consider two different classifiers learned with source samples. There is exist discrepancy region for each classifier like this. And the next step they train the task specific classifier F1 and F2 as a discriminator for a fixed generator G. They train the classifiers to increase the discrepancy. For measuring the discrepancy they utilize the absolute values of the difference between the two classifiers probabilistic outputs. The P1K and P2K denote probability output of P1 and P2 for class K respectively. The discrepancy means how the two classifiers disagree on their predictions. By learning classifiers to maximize the discrepancy, they can detect the target samples far from the source. The key intuition is target samples outside the source domain are likely to be classified differently by the two distinct classifiers. In this step B, we train classifiers to maximize the discrepancy to detect target samples outside the source. This makes its task specific classification boundaries refined. Also, it finds target samples that is far from the source domain. Without this operation, the two classifiers can be very similar and cannot detect target samples outside the support of the source. In the next step, they train the feature generator to minimize the discrepancy for fixed classifiers. In this paper, they repeat this step for the same mini-batch n times, and this number n is a hyperparameter of their method. In the step B, when classifiers are trained to maximize the discrepancy, more target samples outside the 
sorts are likely to be classified differently by the two different classifiers. Then in step C, the train feature generated to full discriminative by minimizing the discrepancy. This encourages the, encourages the target samples to be generated inside the source. The figure shows that the target samples are generated near the source samples with fixed decision boundaries. We can repeat step B and C for our next steps, like this. Then we can get the, the this obtained distributions. Our goal is to obtain the features in which the support of the target is included by that of the source. And when we repeat the step B and C, we can get expected distributions like this. They explain that their method is motivated by the theory proposed by Ben David et al. They show the relationship between their method and the theory. Ben David et al. proposed the theory that bounds the expected error and the target samples RT of H by using three terms. The error on the target samples bounded by expected error on the source domain rs and h delta h distance between source and target and the shared error on of the ideal joint hypothesis lambda here rt of h is the error of hypothesis h on the target domain and rs of h is the corresponding error on the source domain h delta h distance defined as supremum of difference between disagreement of two hypotheses H and H prime outputs from source domain and target domain. This term measures as the discrepancy between two classifiers for source and target domain. In this paper they consider this term. Regarding H delta H distance with S and T, if we consider that H and H prime can classify source samples correctly by step A, this is assumed to be very low. Then H and H prime should agree on their predictions on source samples. Thus, this term, this h delta h distance term is approximately calculated as these terms, which denotes the supremum of expected disagreement of two classifiers' predictions on target samples. This can be applied to the method in the pa in this paper. Assume that h and h prime share the feature generate part. G, then we can decompose the hypothesis H into H into F1 dot G and H prime into F2 dot G. If we substitute these notations into these terms and for fixed G, the term will become like this. Furthermore, if we pl replace supremum with max and minimize the term with respect to G, we obtain like this. This equation is very similar to the minimax problem in this paper, in which classifiers are trained to maximize their discrepancy on target samples and generator G tries to minimize it. They observe the behavior of proposed method on intertraining moons to the toy problem. The goal of this experiment is to observe the learned classifier's boundary. They generate those two moons and generate target samples by rotating the source samples. When they test, they tested 
the method on 1000 target samples and visualized and learned decision boundary with source and target samples. As they expected, when they trained the two classifier to increase the discrepancy on ta target samples, two classifier largely largely dis disagreed on their predictions on target samples. Two classifiers were trained on the source samples without adaptation, and the boundaries seem to be nearly the same. Their proposed method attempt to generate target samples that reduce the discrepancy, therefore they could expect the two classifiers can be similar. They also evaluate the adaptation of model on five data set pairs, and the figure shows TSNE plot of non-adaptation model and proposed model for synthetic science to GTSRB. They show the their method outperform the previous methods. Also they evaluate their method on on objective classification data set Vista data set. This data set consists synthetic object as source image and real object images as target image. Up to date this data set represents the largest for cross domain object classification. Their method achieved the accuracy much better than other distribution matching based method MMD and DNN. Also they apply their method to semantic segmentation. They evaluate on two data pairs, GTA 5 to Cityscape and Cynthia to Cityscape. They achieve better performance in quantitative and qualita qualitative aspects than previous works. Now I summarize this paper. In this paper, they proposed a new pr approach for unsupervised domain notation, which utilized task-specific classifiers to align distributions. They proposed to utilize task-specific classifiers as discriminator that try to detect target samples that are far from the source. Also, they find the relationship of the previous theory and their method. So they achieve the state of the art result for domain adaptation for classification and also semantic segmentation. Thank you for listening.